Hey everybody, Gavin Syme here, and today let's skip introductions and not waste time and talk about how to freaking use Lightroom presets in Photoshop. If you're a Lightroom user, you know that Lightroom presets are powerful, and you probably know that those presets also work in Camera Raw from Photoshop, and in the newer versions of Lightroom and Photoshop, you don't even really have to install them in both. They just work because they're using a common folder. But for the more old schoolers who are more Photoshop geared and more action geared, I get a lot of support questions because people go to SimeFX, they buy our presets, and then they're like, well, these don't work like actions. And I say, no, it's because they're presets and they work differently, but they work amazing. And here's the thing, actions are really layer-based, they're really retouch and detail-based, and presets are more of a global batch kind of workflow. And you know what? Both are very important to my workflow and I think to a lot of your workflows because presets are phenomenal for batches. Personally, I think they work best in the raw editor directly from Lightroom but there's certainly reasons to use them in Photoshop, or maybe you only use Photoshop, and today we're gonna to look at how to quickly get those going in Photoshop. And I'm gonna try and cover all the questions and pitfalls that people run into when using presets in Photoshop. First to Lightroom, just to show you, here's an image. You can see I have the Belladonna 2 portrait collection, and I've run the Blue Dancer effect on this image. It looks good, great. That's all we're gonna look at for Lightroom for now. If we imported presets from here, different video if you want to look at that video. It's here on the channel as well, but we're not going to talk about importing presets into Lightroom. The bottom line is if you use Lightroom and you imported presets, they're probably already in Camera Raw and you may not even need this video except for the other tips that I'm going to give you. Let's go to Photoshop and you can see if we're in Photoshop, here's the same image that I opened in Photoshop, but it's, it's ungraded. Nothing's been done. So we need to run the presets on it. In the latest versions of Photoshop, this is all done from the filter menu. You can just go to the filter menu. Now, if you're using an older version of Photoshop like CS6, you can still run Camera Raw from Photoshop. It's not quite as integrated and convenient. Uh, you will actually need to go to the open menu and open the image in Camera Raw, or you can run it from Bridge, but it, it's still gonna work. And you can use them that way. But if you're using a new version of Photoshop, you can just go to the filter menu and you can run the camera raw filter and it's going to open right up here and you're going to see here's our camera raw profiles and this works a lot like Lightroom. I can go to the presets menu and you can see I have Belladonna 2 installed here as well. Now let's look at how we install it however though. Again if you're in the newer versions of Photoshop, if you're on cloud and you're up to date, you can just click these three dots. I know this is a little small. My interface text here is a little smaller than it should be, but I'm gonna upload this in 4K so you can watch it in full screen if you need to, okay? So you can manage presets from here just like you can in Lightroom now. You can show and hide packs. Uh, you can also import presets. So if I click import and I just go to my desktop, here's my download of Belladonna, and I'm gonna go to the raw Photoshop and Lightroom version, not the legacy version. The legacy version is only the old LR preset version of the presets for versions of Lightroom before 7.3. Don't try using those in Camera Raw. They won't work. You need the XMP files, which in the case of our presets are neatly organized here, and they're already in a zip file. Now, in a minute, I'm going to show you how to do the old school install method for older versions, but all you actually have to do here is take the folder, the zip folder, you don't even have to unzip it, and click open, and it will import the entire package right here from this manager into Camera Raw, and you'll be done. So even if you didn't install them from Lightroom, they're right here. In this case, the error is that it didn't import, and that's because I already had them in here, but if I hadn't have had them in here, they would have been right here. And you can see now I can go down to the Blue Dancer effect. There it is. I can press OK, and it's going to run that effect on my image. I'm gonna come back to this, so hold this thought, and I'm gonna show you a few more tips with how we run presets on our images in Photoshop. But first, I want to make sure that you know how to get the presets in manually, because it's done the same way as you manually install and organize presets for Lightroom, because they share a common folder. So let's actually go here. Here's the path of where presets are stored the XMP presets on Mac and on Windows. I'm on Windows at the moment. Let's just open the file manager and I'm gonna take this and go right here, local disk C, I'm gonna go to my users, I'm gonna go to my Gavin Syme folder. So this is my user account. One thing that trips people up is go to the view menu here. 
all right, in the Explorer window. See where it says hidden items? If this is unchecked, app data is not going to show. And similarly, on new versions of Mac, application support is often hidden, and you have to go to the menu and show hidden folders in the view menu. I think it's in the view menu on Mac as well. So that's important. They're kind of doing this thing in these OSs these days where they're dumbing it down to keep us from getting into trouble and they just make our life harder oftentimes. Show hidden items and you can see we have app data, roaming, Adobe, camera raw, and settings, okay? And as you can see, here's all those folders. There's Belladonna 2.1 and a bunch of other presets that I have installed where you can just drop folders. Now, this is where I can manually install presets. If I drop a folder of presets in here, it's going to be available in Lightroom and in Photoshop, depending on what I'm using, or Camera Raw, I should say. And let's actually look at how to do that. So I'm gonna open that same download of Belladonna. Let's go to our raw presets. Now, here's the thing. Don't drop a zip folder if you're doing the manual method, okay? If you're doing the manual method, you actually want to unzip. So I'm going to right-click, extract all, and it will extract my folder right here. And you can see it's an unzipped folder. And here's all our XMP files, which are the presets inside. And I can just drag this over into my camera raw settings. We'll just replace it for good measure because we can and now it's in there so we just installed them manually as well and if you're in an older version of camera raw that doesn't have the preset management options this is how you're going to want to do that it's still very simple download whatever preset pack you're using make sure it's unzipped and just put that folder right here into the camera raw settings folder and again here is whoop, here is those paths. Now it's worth noting that if you have any confusion on paths or notes or anything comes after this that I add notes on, if you go to the help page over at simefx.com slash help, you can see that there's a section for Photoshop and Camera Raw and I put notes and things like that in this just in case things come up and when questions come up, I put things in here. Although I've been getting a lot of questions over the recent months because more Photoshop users have been using presets these days because they're more integrated and because we're really making sure that the Photoshop users know over at SimeFX, we're putting the word out, hey, you can use presets in Photoshop just like you use actions. They're different, but they're both good. Let's go back to this image and I'm gonna show you a, a tip that some of you might like if you really have an action-based workflow because here we have the actions palette, right? They're not actions, they're presets, and we run them from Camera Raw. However, there's a workaround to this if you really like actions. Maybe you have a favorite preset like Blue Dancer, and you want it in your actions panel, in your button mode that you've set up, and your color coding. Maybe you have scripts that you're using for automations, and you can do that in Photoshop too, because Photoshop. All right, so let's go down here. We're in the actions panel, and you can actually open that, of course, from the window menu, but we have it open, the actions panel. I'm gonna create a new action set, new set, it says, okay? And we're gonna call this Bella 2. And inside that, I'm gonna move it to the top so it's easy to see. All right, here's Bella 2. Inside that, I'm gonna make a new action, new action. And we're gonna call this Blue Dancer, okay? And I'm gonna click record. If you're a Photoshop user, you may already know this, but this is how you make an action, okay? All I'm gonna do now is go to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. And I'm gonna run whatever preset from the Presets menu. Anything I do now in Camera Raw is gonna be recorded into this action. So I can go down and can run the Blue Dancer and just press OK. It's gonna run the effect and it's recorded that effect, okay? And that's it. Now, if I go to this action and I run it again, it's not gonna double up that effect. It, it's, it's too much. It's, it's too much. Okay, but let's undo that and let's undo the original one. There's one more thing I can add here if I was doing a workflow plan. I can go in and I can start record. Let me go down to the record button and continue recording this action and add a new step. I'm going to drag my background layer to the plus icon in the layers panel and make a copy of my image layer. And then I'm going to press stop and you can see it put this at the bottom. I'm going to put it above camera raw filter. So here's our action set. Here's the action Blue Dancer, and here's the steps in that action, okay? I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna press play after I delete that layer we just made so I can show you how it works. I'm pressing play, it's making a copy of the layer and running the action. Here's the beauty of this, and this is actually a feature of using actions in Photoshop that we don't have in Lightroom that actually is really cool because we've applied a preset now 
to a layer and we can now control opacity. We could turn this down a little bit and apply another preset and control opacity. So it's really cool. A lot of times I don't need to use a preset in Photoshop, but sometimes I'm doing a quick edit. I don't want to import into Lightroom and I absolutely do use presets from right here in the filter menu. Use what works for you. If you want to make them into actions, if you want to use them in Camera Raw, if you want to use them as kind of an avenue to start playing with Camera Raw and then move to Lightroom, that could be efficient for your workflow as well. But the bottom line is here, you can open the Camera Raw filter from the filter menu or in older menus, you're going to use the open in Camera Raw command or open from bridge. You get in here and you run your presets. A couple things in this menu that if I mentioned they bear re-mentioning, you can manage presets from here just like you do in Lightroom where you can show and hide packs. You can right click on a pack and you can rename it. You can delete the entire group, things like that. And you can also mix things up a little bit and import presets like I showed you from here. Make sure that the show partially compatible presets is turned on. What happens in Lightroom is it grays them out and in, in Camera Raw, for some reason, it hides them and it's really silly. Let's say you have a preset and we design a preset for a RAW file or to work on a RAW file. So it has a RAW file profile. Then you open a JPEG. The preset's fine. All the color science, everything you need is there. But that particular RAW profile might not apply to a JPEG. And so it'll just hide the preset entirely, which is silly because the preset works just fine. So make sure, unless you have a reason not to, that you have show partially compatible presets on. That should be the default. And for some reason, it doesn't seem to be. But yeah, run all your presets. You can also use your other camera raw settings in here and do whatever you need. And it's all right there within your filter menu in Photoshop. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Give it a like, sub the channel if you like these kind of videos and enjoy your presets. And if you bought a sign pack, I thank you, go to town with it. And if you are just browsing around and you found this video and you want to check out some of our presets like Filmus, like Silver, like Belladonna Portrait Collection, head over to signeffects.com and I think you guys will enjoy it. All right, that is all for today. Peace out. You guys, we'll talk soon.